Good morning, YouTube. This is Waterfall Joe, and welcome to another video. Today we are here at Connecticut's beautiful Wadsworth Falls State Park. And today I'm gonna to be walking you through some camera settings, the proper equipment, and pretty much everything you need to know to photograph waterfalls. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so starting with the equipment required for waterfall photography, there's a few obvious ones. You're gonna need a camera, you're gonna need a lens, and a tripod is an absolute must have for any type of long exposure photography. In terms of the more specific things, I do like to use a lens hood, uh, especially on days like today. It's actually a little sunny and it is causing a little bit of a flaring problem in my photos, so a lens hood is a great idea. And then I'm actually using two filters. The first one is a circular polarizer. You can see it, you can reduce the glare on things with that. And then I'm also using a neutral density filter and you can see when I hold this over the waterfall, this allows you to get a longer exposure by reducing the amount of light coming through your photo. In terms of the lens that I'm using, I'm using a wide angle lens. This is a 17 to 28 Nikon. And that's because I wanna be able to get the entire waterfall in the shot. So let's go ahead and get you zoomed in on my camera here and I'll start walking through all the camera settings to start getting that long exposure effect for your waterfalls. Okay, so you can see on my screen here how I have everything set up, my composition, my settings. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through everything and um, you know, hopefully you can use these settings to photograph a waterfall yourself. So first thing is I am shooting in manual mode. So I am setting my shutter speed, aperture, and my ISO all manually. Now let me walk you through what each of these means. One point, or one and one third of a second. This is essentially almost a second long exposure. So if I go ahead and take this photo, you can see how I'm able to get that long exposure effect versus let's say if I bump this down, uh, let's try, let's try a 50th of a second. You can see how the water is no longer a uh, long exposure. Now it's kind of like frozen. So let's just go back 1 50th, almost a second. All right, let me bump back where I was. Okay, next up is aperture. So your f-stop controls your depth of field. So for this photo, I want everything in focus all the way from this rock right here, all the way to the waterfall in the background. I don't want anything blurry. If I was doing, say, a portrait of someone, I would want a lower aperture, something like f2.8. That would give me a, a blurrier background. But for a waterfall, you know, we really want everything in focus in this photo. My lens goes down to 2.8, but for this type of photo, I am going to be using a higher aperture. Most lenses have a sweet spot anywhere from f8 up to f14. Somewhere in there is where some, most lenses are at their sharpest. Next up is ISO. So ISO is how sensitive your camera is to light. For example, today it's very bright. It's almost sunny out here. There's no reason for the ISO to be high. So I have it at ISO 100. The higher your ISO goes, the grainier your photo is going to get. For example, any Milky Way, any nighttime photography, those ISOs are gonna be very high, and therefore you're gonna have a lot of grain in your image. Uh, for, but for this photo, I want a low ISO. It's going to give me the cleanest photo possible, as well as allow me to take the longest exposure because the camera isn't very sensitive to light right now. So when we combine all of these settings together, we get a nice long exposure. Okay, so now let's walk through the eye menu. So I use shoot Nikon and uh, I have an eye menu, but of course, if you shoot any other camera, every manufacturer has their own version of this. Now let me just walk you through each one of these settings. First one is bracketing. For today, I'm gonna not do bracketing, but um, if you saw my video a few weeks ago about bracketing and HDR, I did for a, a Kirkjewell waterfall in Iceland, I did a five image bracket for that. Next up is raw. I highly recommend shooting in RAW, especially if you're going to be doing any Lightroom editing. The other option is a JPEG, which would be fine, normal, all those. Those are JPEGs. If you're not doing edit any editing, there's no reason to shoot in RAW. Next up for waterfalls, I actually like to use a two second timer. So this means when I press the button to shoot, it takes two seconds and then it takes the photo, just to reduce any shake in the, fo in the photo for me pressing the button. Next up is the autofocus area. This one isn't too terribly important in my opinion. I just like to do single point 
And you might notice here it's this little red box and I can move it wherever I want. I usually just like to put it somewhere near where I'm photographing. The other options are a larger box. You know, now I have this huge box here. And we also can do auto area, but I don't like this one because sometimes it might not focus right where you want it to. I'm a big fan of just leaving it on one of these smaller ones here. You know, now I can pinpoint this exactly where I want it to go. Okay, next up is white balance. I just leave mine on automatic, especially if you're shooting raw, but I'll show you what the other ones do. You can see like in the shade, it got pretty orange. Of course, incandescent, uh, that's if like you're inside, fluorescent if you're inside. Uh, a lot of these I don't mess with, I just leave this on automatic. And if it's a little too orange or a little too blue, I'll just adjust that in Lightroom. Image size, I want my files to be as large as possible for the most amount of detail, so I leave all of that on large. Matrix metering is what I use. Um, for landscapes, there's really no reason to go to spot or highlight. I just leave it right on matrix. Memory cards, I have two memory cards. It, everything I do goes to both. I highly recommend that just in case something happens to one of, your, one of your memory cards. It is on both cards. Vibration reduction, I have this turned off because I am on a tripod. If you are, say, handheld, then you would turn this on. But for a tripod, I always leave this turned off. And last up, focus mode. I just leave this on autofocus single. If you are photographing any action, birds, movement, you would want to go to continuous. But for waterfalls, I just leave that on single. Okay, next up, let's talk about filters. Okay, so today I'm actually using two filters plus my lens hood. So let's walk through that. So on the front here, I have two filters. So the first filter is my circular polarizer. This is a ProMaster HGX polarizer. And what this does is it allows you to reduce the glare in your photo. Actually on my Z30 here, I actually have a polarizer and if I spin it, you can tell how it is reducing the glare on the water. So I'm gonna put a before and after of no polarizer versus polarizer here on the screen for you to compare. And my opinion is probably the most important filter for your waterfall photography. Okay, now the other filter that I use is a neutral density filter. This is a ProMaster 67 millimeter three-stop neutral density filter. And you can tell when I hold it over the waterfall, let me adjust you a little bit here. When I hold it over the waterfall, it actually darkens the photo, video. This allows you to get a much longer exposure in your photography versus no ND filter. So in terms of the camera settings for your photo, you know, I mentioned F10, 1.3 of a second, and ISO 100. This is just a recommendation. You can be anywhere in that range and get a fantastic long exposure. I know people who even shoot waterfalls at 30 seconds or longer. Um, I personally don't like to go more than a couple seconds just because you start to get what I call the milkshake effect. And that's actually where you start to lose the fine strands of detail in the water. For example, in this photo here, you can tell that when I you can see the individual strands of the waterfall in the image. And uh, in my opinion, that's what, really what I'm going for here. If I were to do, say, a 30 second exposure, I would start to lose the individual textures and it would just become kind of a whitewash of exposure. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Just a personal preference. I like to keep it on the shorter end of the long exposure, if that makes sense. I generally shoot my waterfalls anywhere from one second, a half second, up to maybe a, a couple of seconds. But just in my opinion, that gives me the most ideal results. Another thing to note is I did mention I'm using two filters. Now, if you use a wide angle lens like me, you're actually gonna get some vignetting in the corners, but um, it's something that I deal with. I Sometimes I would just zoom the lens in just a little bit, or I will go into Photoshop and just uh, spot heal those corners. The other option is just to use one filter. And if you were to just use one filter for waterfalls, I say the neutral density is the more important one here. But in my opinion, I, I use a polarizer more than anything to help eliminate the glaring on the water. So I would, I would recommend just going out and if you already have it or getting a neutral density and polarizer and just experimenting around for your waterfalls. They are both so important. And um, over my time of shooting waterfalls, I've discovered that using the both together gives me my most ideal results. That's the beauty of all of this is it's kind of a personal preference. You know, find your style, find what works best for you.
I like to use around a one second exposure with a polarizer and a neutral density, but that's just my take. So I'd say recommend, go out and try it yourself. Another way to experiment around with your photography as waterfalls is to both shoot horizontal and vertical. So for now I have it set to horizontal and I do have an L bracket on here. So what we could do is we could just take this, flip it vertically, and now we have a whole new world of, of composition options here. Right here in front of me we have this nice rock and I could have a lot of fun experimenting and using this to maybe create a leading line, leading a, a viewer's eyes toward the waterfall. Let's go ahead and get closer. Okay, so you can see how now our eyes are going to kind of follow this line up toward the waterfall here. I've essentially created a line here that the viewer will look from the, will look from the bottom of the image toward the top. Um, in my opinion, I always try to position something just to give people a little bit more of time to look through the photo. Um, and I, I always try to work with a little bit of negative space, but I really want to lead the viewer's eye towards the main subject. And for example, this rock is making a spectacular foreground element. So let's go ahead and photograph this. I have my two-second timer going. And now you can see, not only do we have a background element, we also have something to lead our eyes toward that background element. And if that makes it where people look at it for just a little bit longer and just observe just a little bit longer, I think that makes all the difference in my opinion. So another thing that I love to do for my waterfall photography, if possible, is to incorporate a person for scale. So I'm actually going to go up here on these rocks carefully, and I'm just going to take some photos with my camera set to a 20 second timer while I carefully go up there and get in my image. And this way you're going to be able to just get a, a sense of scale for this waterfall. So I'm going to go ahead and head up there now. Okay, so another thing that I love to do in my photography when possible is frame the photo. Not frame the picture after I take it, frame the subject of the image. So here, of course, we have the waterfall, but I've stepped back a little bit and now I am framing it by all of these trees here. And if I take that image, I just absolutely love how when I look at the waterfall, there's color surrounding it pretty much everywhere. Now, of course, this isn't really possible in winter or anything, but right now it's the middle of September and we have some great transition from nice greens and we even have some good, some good autumn foliage happening already. Um, I, I have a feeling after all the rain we've got here in Connecticut this summer, I'm hoping we get a good autumn. So I'm actually using my wide angle, but I have it zoomed in as much as I possibly can. And let me zoom you guys in on my screen here. So you can see we have our waterfall here, and of course my camera battery is about to die, so I have to swap that out. None of my settings have changed. I'm still at those settings. I find that these settings for today particularly are working out really well. So you might notice here, you know, I've, I've done my best to frame this waterfall as best as I can. This is another example where if I were to shoot the camera vertically, Uh, and this opinion, I don't think it works out as well here. I, I actually like the horizontal a little bit better. And then let's, you know, I absolutely love this image and we can actually experiment with our polarizer to, and change up how we want this reflection. In this photo, the polarizer is not doing too much, but I'm going to polarize it all the way, set my two second, oh, take it off the 20 seconds, set it to two seconds and go ahead and fire away. Yeah, that's a winner in my opinion, or at least I think it's a winner now. One of the things I like to say as a photographer is it looks great on the camera screen, but how will it look on the computer screen? So. I use my wide angle for 90% of my photography, but I'm actually going to switch over to my telephoto and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to experiment around with a more zoomed in approach rather than the wide angle. So. I've made a video on this lens. This is my absolute favorite lens here. Let's get it focused here. This is the Tamron 35 to 150. This thing is absolutely spectacular. 
But um, I actually, this is, I have this in a wide angle and that's really my two main setup. I made a video about that a few months back. I was at a waterfall and it was like six degrees outside. So a little bit different than today. But this lens I'm going to use and we're actually gonna zoom in closer and I'm gonna show you a little bit more about how to use a more zoomed in lens. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out now. Okay, so I have my 35 to 150 on and I'm just gonna show you how fun this lens could be. So here we are at 35 and look at when we zoom all the way into 150, look how much the, you know, the upper details, the closer details we can get. So I'm gonna experiment around and see what composition feels right here. So let's take a shot at 35 and see how this looks. Yeah, let's adjust this a little bit. There we go, get some of that, get some of that foliage in there. Oh, did it take, here we go. Now once again for my 35-150, I do have a polarizer and a three-stop ND filter on there. All right, so I'm actually shooting at about 50 millimeters right now. I'm absolutely loving, once again, framing this waterfall with the autumn foliage. Uh, I think autumn's coming a little early this year. I'm at around 100 millimeters here. And I actually love shooting on the higher end of a lens, especially for those up close and texture photos. So I absolutely love that we have kind of eliminated all the outside stuff. We're not so worried about framing anymore. We're really just focusing in on the textures here. So if we go ahead and take this image here. You know, now we have, we're really, I'm not gonna say intimate with the waterfall, but we're very up close. We're focusing on the details. We're not really focusing on the outside of framing or anything. All right, everyone, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it was informative. And if you're just a beginner trying to get into this, I hope maybe you go out and shoot and maybe come back and reference this in a few months, you know, try a different setting or, any, or something. Today I covered settings, filters, lenses, tripods, compositions to try. I hope you're able to go out and find a waterfall and experiment with these settings soon. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe down below because this is kind of what the channel is all about. Waterfalls, photography, techniques, tips, pretty scenery just to enjoy. And the next few weeks, I'm hoping to get out more, especially with the autumn foliage. I'll actually be in Utah at the beginning of October teaching a Milky Way photography workshop with my good friend Pete DeMarco. So I don't know if I'll have any videos of that because I will have to be teaching that time. But we're going to be doing Milky Way, so I should hopefully have some um, photos at least to share with you guys. But uh, share this with your friends, especially if you're into waterfalls or photography. You know, this is what I'm all about. So this is Waterfall Joe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.